And Berto never ceases to amaze me. So when I first heard about the Kanto Classic, I immediately thought of my good friend Berto because he is a first gen warrior. Most of his teams, if not all of them these days, are only first generation Pokemon, which means the Kanto Classic was made for him, and only he would be the person that's like, you know what, Kangaskhan loses its Mega because it's stripped of items, I'm going to use it. That's what, alright, we gotta see what awesomeness Berto is up to this time. Now we do have two battles that I will be showing, so stay tuned for those, and if you want to be on Fan Fridays, comment a battle code down below from your verse recorder. That's all it takes, give me the code, I'll check it out, and I am a couple weeks behind, so it'll be like two, three weeks from now if you make it on or not. So that's going to be the lead on that fake out with the Kangaskhan into the Dizzy Punch, because that's how you play it. And no, oh, I was hoping, I was really hoping to see that confusion right there, but the Stealth Rocks will be in, and that's another Dizzy Punch. So the Dunk comes in, and that's Kangaskhan still at full health, still untouched, and then getting that technically three shot onto the Nidoking. Now Alakazam is going to come in, and Alakazam just going to go for that Protect. So it looks like Protect, Disable, Shenanigan, Alakazam. Ooh, Kangaskhan with that Sucker Punch though. Alakazam is going to go for that Protect. So, wow, actually managing to get two Protects back to back. Kangaskhan spamming that Sucker Punch out. And the Withdraw on the Alakazam. So maybe not Protect, Disable, because you could have disabled that or gone for some kind of prediction. And now we're in for the Snorlax. So Snorlax is on the field and Kangaskhan wants to roll so sucker punch going to fail right there and the low kick huge damage on the snorlax not huge but still pretty solid and snorlax curse lax always strong it's going to be less damage on that next low kick but snorlax doesn't have what it takes to take out the kangaskhan i believe and he's just going to fall to that tech right there so snorlax with the body slam is it going to be substantial no kangaskhan's still looking healthy after that one just a very high hit point, really bulky Pokemon, even without the Mega. And the 3 hit KO on the low kick happens right there. Now the Dragonite. Okay, so Dragonite going to go for that extreme speed. Is it going to pay out? Yes, it will. All right, so the Kangaskhan does go down to that extreme speed. That could have been silly if it didn't. Blastoise is going to be the response, and that's a nice beam. That's free damage on whatever Dragonite wants to switch out on actually gets the outspeed on that Outrage, so not even going for the Dragon Dance right there. Blastoise, it's a man, and of course, why would I think it's an Ice Beam on Berto's Blastoise? He's, he's forcing switches, he's making Pokemon tired, and he's going to get that Protect on the opponent staying in on the Outrage because he has no other choice. So either way, with that Outrage, it's a win-win. And then now he's going to fall asleep. Cool. So we get to see if Berto gets the Mastery down right there. Alright, Dragonite's still asleep. Is, did Berto throw out the damage? Yes, he did. That's going to be the Ice Beam. So from full health after the multi... Oh, yeah, Tank Blastoise. So doesn't really matter too much. Dragonite's going to wake up. He is now confused. Hits himself in confusion. And Blastoise gets that other Ice Beam on. So that will be enough for the KO right there. And are we going to see some extra Yawn shenanigans? You just throw it out, go for that Protect, and fun things happen. There's the Alakazam. Energy Ball could get nasty, or he has the Psy Shock. So Alakazam throwing out the Psy Shock onto the Blastoise. The raw damage will not be enough to chip this Tortoise's armor. And now Alakazam is getting drowsy. Wait, I think this might be it, guys. I'm waiting for that golden Berto outplay where he reads that double yawn. Opponent's getting the switch, and Berto gets the yawn. That's my man right there. He knows how to play those yawn strats. All right, the opponent keeps switching. He doesn't want any more Pokemon to sleep. Going to go into Venusaur this time, and Venusaur is going to eat the yawn! There's no way! There is no way! Now is the opponent going to figure this one out? Alright, withdrawing the Venusaur, just going all in. And here's the thing, if there were items, Berto's Blastoise have leftovers and be getting so much free health, that's four yawn predictions in a row! I don't even care what happens right now, it's on! Oh no, and the train ends. Could have been a Protect. But Starmie sticks it out anyways, and now he's asleep. So that's one Pokemon asleep. Berto does have the switch in advantage right now, and he is going to opt in for the Jolteon. We also got to see a huge chunk of the opponent's team as well, which is... Well, actually, no, we already see it in Select, so never mind. But the Shadow Ball going to be the safe damage onto Starmie. Huge, super effective hit. If he switched into Alakazam or something like that, would have been massive as well. And it looks like he's going to lose his Starmie. 
for trading on that Blastoise. And then Jolteon still going to be pretty fast and able to deal with a lot right there. Does that tank minimize Starmie? I feel like it was it was taking a little less damage than it should have. So that's going to be the Alakazam in right there. Jolteon switching it up to the Thunderbolt instead of the Shadow Ball. And Alakazam going to take a hit, get paralyzed. And Alakazam's response is the Psy Shock. But I don't think Psy Shock, it's not going to have enough to take out the Alakazam or take out the Jolteon from near full. And there's the Shadow Ball response right there on the Alakazam. That will definitely be the end of that KO. And Alakazam goes down, but the yawns from earlier. Very funny stuff. In comes Venusaur. Venusaur looks like he's going to be able to put an end to this Jolteon's party. Jolteon with the wish, however. Berto told me about this. He said he's loving this wish, Jolteon, because say an, a Pokemon goes down like this, or like if Jolteon ends up getting the trade, Jolteon's already gotten KOs. He's already done more than enough, and now you get to bring in a Pokemon that needs health back. Unfortunately, Aerodactyl isn't really too much in this situation. Yeah, you get to heal up from the Stealth Rocks uh, off of that wish, and there's a taunt, just in case Venusaur wants to go for a Leech Seed or something silly. Sleep Powder! That too. Yeah, the Sleep Powder on Venusaur gets stopped from that taunt. Aerodactyl back at full. There's a Fire Fang for the super effective damage. That's absolutely massive right there. Okay, critical hit, but still a 2 KO. Venusaur doesn't get to do too much on that Giga Drain. Not gonna be enough to knock out the Aerodactyl. But that... Ooh, is that still in Fire Fang range? Like, it took the crit to get there the first time. And then that will be enough to finish off the Venusaur right there. So good stuff on that Fire Fang. But yeah, he told me about the Wish, and it looks like the battle is over. But just in case late in the game, you know, Jolteon, it wants to be that late game sweeper. So it can actually heal up pretty well. I'd imagine doing that for the Blastoise is pretty hilarious. But Berto, he gave us one more. So let's go and check out how that battle ends up playing out. Now, what this makes me realize is how much balance Berto's team has. Because, you know, good sweepers, a lot of fast Pokemon, but then some good tanks as well to kind of deal with a little bit of everything and just tough it out when he needs to. So let's get into this next battle. And he said that this has been his best battle so far from the Kanto Classic. And there's the Kangaskhan. What's Big Mama going to do against the Clefable? Ugh. Ugh, Clefable is just an absolutely filthy Pokemon to go up against, especially in this. Like, it doesn't have too much opposing it. Kangaskhan, you know, you just get that free fake out damage, you switch into something that's gonna be able to deal with it. Gengar! Clefable Shadow. Ooh. The Endeavor! Okay, I don't know what's up with that Endeavor on that Clefable, but not going to do too much to the Gengar. Gengar with that poison is going to be able to check into that Clefable and throws out the Hypnosis instead because. Hey, a switch is coming or Clefable doesn't get to do anything against Gengar, and that's going to work out just fine. So Snorlax going to sleep, Gengar switching out. So yeah, you just get that sleep, you get the switch. We've already seen the low kick throw out a lot of power against anything like a Snorlax, and that's going to be sleep right there. So the sleep talk. Funny enough, he's got it. So that's going to be rest talk Snorlax on that body slam into the Kangaskhan. Wow. All right, that's a good amount of damage right there, but the low kick, also pretty nasty. Snorlax is going to be fast asleep. We're going to sleep, see the sleep talk once again, but what are we going to get out of it? That's going to be the crunch. Okay, so not stab on this one. The crunch actually would have been huge against the Gengar as well, which is kind of crazy, but he's going to withdraw his Snorlax on this turn, and that's going to be responding with the Clefable. So the low kick on Clefable, not going to be too crazy. Nah, that's... Way too resisted, probably bold, probably just full defensive. And now Kangaskhan getting switched out, going into Venusaur this time. Different poison option, just to see what the Clefable is going to be up to. There's the Moonblast. So Venusaur should be able to deal with that pretty well. Very well. And there's the not very effective hit. Venusaur with the Sludge Bomb, so the opponent decides to stay in. And the Sludge Bomb will be enough to decimate this Clefable. When I said earlier that Clef Clefable doesn't have a lot of threats, I probably didn't think that one through because Venusaur and Gengar are pretty common in this. Uh, if Clefable gets, yeah, like, if it gets enough Calm Minds to where the Sludge Bomb doesn't matter, it's potential, but whatever. And that's going to be the switch into Aerodactyl from the Venusaur, and it's going to wake up and go for the rest right there. So yeah, I guess, like, full hit points, max attack, Snorlax for the rest top crunch body slam. I mean, you body slam everything for massive neutral damage, or you can crunch a Gengar. And things get pretty fun. There's Aerodactyl, though. So Snorlax comes in, get, gets full health, which actually works out really well. Aerodactyl, though, switches into that taunt. Or Dragonite switches into that taunt. That's bad. Dragonite's slow without that Dragon Dance. That's going to be a huge rock slide. 
Weakening it up. That multi scale has gone. Iron Head going to hit. And it's going to not be enough to knock out the Aerodactyl. What? Oh, yeah, the extreme speed. You can't, yeah, you got to switch out. Can't eat that extreme speed. Going into the Gengar. Easy play right there. There's the extreme speed. Gengar not going to be effective. Taunt Warrior's off. Going to switch out the Dragonite anyways. Is that into Snorlax? That's into Snorlax. Does Gengar make the play on a Sludge Bomb? Yes, he did. All right, so no Shadow Ball. Going for that stab on the Sludge Bomb anyways. And a Destiny Bond. That's interesting. That's an interesting play because you're gambling on multiple levels right here. Him keeping it in, him sleep talking into the crunch. And I guess it's worth to get rid of the Gengar for that Snorlax. Just very tanky annoyance right there. And it works. Oh, that had to have been a really fun play if I know Berto. Just like, eh, I'm going to do it. And then he's going to be able to take the attacker down with it. Sludge Bomb, not enough damage to knock it out. A switch, not really worth in that situation. For, so the free one for one into the Jolteon. And that's actually going to work out pretty well because Jolteon's Wish is going to help out that Kangaskhan. And there's the Toxic. So we know it's going to be Thunderbolt, Toxic, and Shadow Ball in this Jolteon. Kind of deals with everything with that Wish. And there's the Shadow Ball from the opposing Jolteon. Neutral hit. Right there. The Toxic going to start taking down. Is this like a tankier Jolteon? Because it survived some decent hits from that Alakazam earlier. And that's going to be a hidden power. I, I don't think he was expecting... I think he was expecting switches or something. But yeah, Jolteon. There's the Wish. So the Toxic damage going to be taking down. And somehow the tank Jolteon is working right now. Because that Wish heal is going to be substantial... The Shadow Ball outspeed, well, actually can't be tanked, unless you, I don't even know. I don't even know, like, the, the supportiveness is kind of crazy. The Shadow Ball, not going to be enough. The Wish is going to heal Jolteon pretty good, and now, yeah, the opponent's Jolteon suddenly losing this very hard because of that Toxic. He's going to withdraw, but that leads to a free Wish, and things are about to get pretty funny right now. So in comes Dragonite. Ooh, Jolteon actually getting a Shadow Ball anyways, just went for the damage. Not going to be too much onto the Dragonite. Dragonite's going to extreme speed. And Jolteon will survive for the Toxic onto the Dragonite. Two opponents Pokemon Toxic from this one Jolteon. And that's going to be Dragonite's response. Hmm. So the Dragonite going for that extreme speed. Jolteon going down. Looks like we don't get to Wish Heal into the Kangaskhan. But that was always an option right there. Uh, the Poison on Dragonite means... He's going to have a pretty bad time, and Jolteon's going to have a pretty bad time as well. And with the Blastoise, you know the team is tanky enough to make it happen. Kangaskhan is there as well. So there's a Withdraw. Doesn't want to eat that Fake Out. And what Pokemon is going to get Fake Out? The Champ. Ooh. The Champ actually seems like a pretty solid Pokemon in this situation. Uh, will be outsped by the Kangaskhan. But Kangaskhan going to switch out. Doesn't want to give it up. Why give it up when you can go into Venusaur and just... Kind of deal with that uh, Machamp pretty well. So there's a Brick Break. No Dynamic Punch. Interesting. I was expecting a Dynamic Punch. But in any case, going to be not very effective. There's the Giga Drain. Going to do good damage and actually heal up quite a bit on this Venusaur. Very stamina intensive battle, I would say. So there's the Earthquake. Going to get that neutral hit onto the Venusaur. Sludge Bomb. In comes the Sludge Bomb. And that will not be enough to finish it off. But the 30% chance of Poison will be after the earthquake though got to take that earthquake damage venusaur will go down and that's another trade right there but remember dragonite's pretty much gone and the jolteon is pretty much gone as well and i'm like the blastoise all he has to do is protect and it's going to be over right there interesting stuff so in comes kangaskhan kangaskhan has been preserved really well and whatever the opponent sends out it's at risk of that fake out so kangaskhan going to get the fake out against blastoise um in, yeah, you just I guess you just throw out damage right now. So there's the low kick going to try to play that weight of the Blastoise going down I would have thrown out the Dizzy Punch. Maybe get a little bit of hacks right there. Kangaskhan goes down to that Scald and now We see where the response is. That's going to be the Aerodactyl Does Aerodactyl have the Thunder Fang? Is it going to go for something like that? Aqua Jet. Oh man, the Blastoise with the Aqua Jet. That has got to catch you off guard. It's got Scald Aqua Jet, so the moveset's been revealed, but that's pretty interesting right there. And now it's the Blastoise. Alright, here comes Blastoise. It's going throughout the Yawn. Interesting stacking the Yawn with the Toxic, though. So if the opponent switches out, he's going to have to eat that Toxic stuff. The Blastoise has Mirror Code as well, and now an Ice Beam. So the opponent switches out, Ice Beam's going to be massive. 
to anything. He stays in. Blastoise doesn't get too much damage. That's going to be free sleep for the opponent right there. Ooh, this is this is now a very slow and drawn out battle. Uh, no leftovers means no unnecessary amounts of healing. The Hydro Pump is going to miss, however. So the most damage that we can put down is not going to be there. There's the Hydro Pump. Will land this time. That's nothing. That's nothing right there. So the Scald, actually, the Blastoise getting that burn could be a lot more substantial right there. That's the burn, so feeling the burn and tons of damage going to be stacking up. Can't have that Hydro Pump miss anymore, and that's going to be another Hydro Pump. This is one of the more silly things I've seen in Pokemon. Here's the Scald Hydro Pump Wars. The damages are not there. Not very effective, but the burn... Ooh, is that going to be enough to finish him off at the end of the next turn? Blastoise is going to get this Hydro Pump in now. Are we going to see a magical crit? No, we do not. Okay. Okay, so that's going to be Scald damage right there. Skull damage stacked up with that burn. Blastoise is actually definitely going down from this one. That skull coming in big right there. But remember, Yvonne has a very, very weakened team. Oh, so that was the end of the battle. Um, that was so close. Oh man, like, actually if you think about it, that one Hydro Pump didn't miss, or if it was like one more turn without the skull burn. That could have been Berto's game, but anyway, we didn't get it. Still some good stuff, like that was a close battle, and Berto, he doesn't care about losses, and neither should you. Now, if you get a good Pokemon battle, it's a good Pokemon battle. I, yeah, I don't really see too much else that could have happened right there, so that went out pretty well, a lot of trades, and just some good, long Kanto Classic skirmishing right there. So if you guys enjoyed Fan Fries this week, hope you guys have a great week, have a great weekend. Have a great day and everything like that. Thank you very much for watching.